Welcome back to the Diecast Museum, guys. Yesterday we were looking at the new Hot Wheels car culture, uh, Fast and the Furious, Modern Classics, Team Transport. Today I'm going to take you on a little journey through the Diecast Museum as we place these cars into their new homes on the Plano display shelves that you see in the background. Also, we'll see where those Team Transport uh, items ended up since they still remain in their packaging. And we are going to also look at new mailbox find. I've got a huge box that just arrived on the doorstep down there. Uh, just loaded full of brand new, probably green light, Johnny Lightning. Who knows what's in there? I've already forgotten. So excited to open that up with you guys. And we're going to start peeling open some of the other stuff that has been accumulating here over the Christmas holidays. As you guys may know, there's a lot of stuff to choose from around the Christmas time as far as die cast goes. And uh, so I always end up with a lot more things than I tend to know how to review in that kind of period of time. But we're going to do our best here. So starting off, let's go over to where Team Transport ended up. This is the overflow area of the house or museum. So we've got a new line of basically Team Transport's going to end up here and work their way down this little section of wall. I've got a bit more wall space over here too. I could clean this up a little better. And over on this side, as you can see, I've got some Johnny Lightnings in the package. This is a little bit of a dimmer part of the basement museum, but uh, I have crowded in some of the more recent team transports that I purchased from earlier in 2021. Hard to believe we're almost at 2022 now. And then of course, team transport finds its way all the way along this bulkhead here. And uh, this goes all the way back from I think one through till 18. Every team transport that came out through, I think, 2019, 2020. You're going to find them all here on the wall, still in their packaging. I don't think I opened up any of these. I may have gotten a duplicate here and there. Really wish I'd gotten a duplicate of that Plymouth Cuda Funny Car and uh, Duster Funny Car Retro Rig. But alas, they were very scarce right off the hop. So that's where the team transport ends up. And as you can see, this bulkhead kind of just segments the former well original hot wheels museum section and now let's get the hot wheels to their new home in the diecast museum I'm gonna get this camera turned around as we head in there and place the brand new modern classics and fast the furious cars and into the rest of the museum we head with our tray of hot wheels passing by the hot wheels display stand where all of the 2021 hot wheels and matchbox cars have ended up so look forward to a sortation video of that coming soon. I'll probably do the 2022 or 2021 Hot Wheel Mainline year in review sometime in January. I don't want to leave it a whole year and a half like I did with the 2020 Hot Wheels. So we're going to go through all of the 2021 Hot Wheels just as soon as I am assured that I have all of the cars that I needed for that collection. There's still some of them trickling in here from local Walmart purchases here on the uh, Lego overflow table. As you can see, there's a little bit of Lego here still. Uh, what else is going on in the museum as we head in here further? Well, still got the shelf covered in Auto World, mostly some Johnny Lightning, Ertl, on this big long shelf that extends about 24 feet. And of course the Lego sortation station some progress here with the town idea. I haven't really done a lot of work on this, to be honest, but it's kind of just feeling out what cars on the museum, or sorry, the museum, the museum Lego City, yet to be named officially, would look like. So as you can see, I've got a mixture of interesting green lights going for a 70s, maybe mid 80s theme with no cars newer than about 87 on this table layout. And, uh, well, it's just got a mixture of things to keep me from going crazy here during these crazy times and uh, holiday season. So the Jawa Sandcrawler from, I think it's a UCS set from 2009 is mostly complete, but still I've got some parts left to assemble on it. I don't know how that's going to fit into the city or if it will. I mean, it might actually be to scale. If you're a Star Wars fan, you know these things are huge. So it might actually be to scale with the cars. It could play into a very interesting post-apocalyptic movie as we do have the post-apocalyptic apocalypse now liberty kind of grunge city element here from i think that was from 2013 or maybe 12 as well it's an older set 
Anyways, that's enough about that for now, as we haven't got too much more to talk about there. And the Plano cases are filling up, as always. These are all my premium Hot Wheels that I've purchased over the years. All these cases of car cultures that I review with you guys typically end up on this wall. So we've got a fair mixture here. Now, it is getting crowded by... Auto World creeping in as I ran out of space on this shelf, as, as mentioned. And uh, Green Light, of course, has crept around the corner. Now, these cars are sorted by type of car, so as I run out of room on one long row, you can see that there's some Ford Explorers and then Mustangs below that, some pickup trucks. But, anyways, as they fill up the entire row on the back wall, they seem to be starting to creep around the corner here, which is intruding into the Hot Wheel area. They're going to meet face to face here in these last available precious cubby holes. So some more Plano cases will need to be installed and definitely a big shift of the car collection down the wall. There is some space uh, just beyond the uh, Lego sortation station shelving where I could probably slam in about eight or ten more Plano cases. So that'll help out a little bit. And then looking around the museum, we've also got some room under this little portion of the wall. I had originally taken about two cases off from the bottom here, so two times about... There's another 10 cases I could put back on the wall. And that was because originally my Lego uh, tables were twice the size of this. And I did kind of get rid of all that because it was just taking up way too much space in the museum. So let's get these cars out i don't think that we're going to be able to put the trailer in a plano case that's going to be too long and i do want to keep that little collection together so we're going to go ahead and uh, just see if we can't make some room uh well i've got a lot of bunch of delivery vans here I could just sit this on top of that and left off up here with some other team transfer not team transport car culture uh, what are we going to put in there first? I think we'll probably put in the Fast and the Furious. And get that Jeep under the other Jeep because that looks pretty cool. And the Glad or the Land Rover Discovery in next to the trucks. I think that was the uh, off-road series that we're looking at there. And now we can transition into the cars. Got a nice little Mustang and the S2000. And the Dodge Charger. That looks pretty good. Now we'll transition over to the modern classics with the uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse. Is that a, no. I was having trouble getting this last card. We'll put this Mitsubishi right in there as well. Drop in a bit of uh, yellow here with the Nissan 300ZX. And let's get a prelude over there. So we're already face to face with some green light stuff here in the next case. Looks like this case is filling up rapidly. There's the Beamer, 92 Beamer. And just because I think these little, this little Matchbox MR2, it really fits in there nice. So I'm going to drop that in there. And just for fun, because I don't know where else to put it just yet, that tiny little uh, truck. So that is another case filled up. I've got one, not even a full case left. So probably got about room for two more reviews of Hot Wheels car culture before we're going to have to do a shift here. And well, the uh, team transport, I'll just jam it on the shelf here somewhere. Maybe right there would probably work out pretty fine in front of the Mad Max cars. Uh, these cars in this Hot Wheels 50 car case are the longest cars that don't fit in the Plano cases. So that's why they're in there. A few trucks up on top. And, oh, we've been joined by Nina. She's always quite excited to see what is going on down here. Kind of multitasking by the looks of it. All right, so we're going to head back into the Diecast Museum now. And uh, let's go see what's up with that giant case. Oh, look, there's room for more Plano right there. What am I talking about? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I've got lots of room left. So I don't need a new house just yet, but I'm getting pretty darn close. It is uh, crowded in here, but I'm kind of like a master Jenga organizer. I can just Jenga things almost into any little space and keep making room where most would probably think that's impossible. It does seem to happen. 
So that's always good. And like I said, I have a lot of things to review with you guys still. All of this new product from various manufacturers down here on the floor. And now we've got another huge box to add to it. So we might as well open it up, see if anything fits in with what I've already got. Maybe complete some of these incomplete green light uh, cases. Because typically you get six vehicles in a green light case set. And a lot of these cars I've been picking up just one at a time, other than the Blue Collar Series. So, let's go ahead and crack this thing open. It's huge. Absolutely huge. Alrighty, guys, let's get this box opened up. Uh, it weighs a lot. 20 inches by 15 inches by 13 inches. That's a lot of cubic feet of cars. Well secured with some tape. And uh, like I said, I really don't remember what I ordered here, but it's a big order from California. Most likely there's going to be some exclusives in here. Stuff that I can't normally get at the local uh, shops and stores all the time. These are from major suppliers. And as we can see, this box is filled with stuff. Wow. So as suspected... Uh, you know, well packaged. Probably going to need some scissors as we get into this horde of die cast just days before Christmas. Really, I should be maybe saving these sorts of things for Christmas time, but whatever. Holy smokes. Jeep Gladiator from Greenlight. 80th anniversary. That is pretty darn cool. No doubt I bought a couple of those. I'm probably going to open one of those up. I hope I bought a couple. Maybe not. Uh, low Riders. These are new to me as well. The 82 Chevrolet Monte Carlo Low Rider. A Miho exclusive. This one's actually from a six vehicle set, I would think. The anniversary set. So, anyways, just more things to uh, add to the opening party that we're going to be facing here over the next few days. Leading up to Christmas. Pretty much a daily video at this point, I think, to try and catch up. Nice that the seller has put the tissue paper between the vehicles. It really, I mean, if you're a package collector, you're going to save on scuffs. Got the new Dually Drivers is in here as well. Wow, Series 8. Very, very exciting. Some awesome old tow trucks, so I can't wait to do an opening review of those. And what else have we got here? So much bubble wrap. Just a ton of bubble wrap, but it's all for a good cause. And yes, looks like some more odds and ends. An exclusive Hobby 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 of the Taxi 91 Ford LTD. That looks fantastic. And we've got V-Dub Club Series 13. That's one of the newer ones. Really cool 79 Volkswagen Rabbit. Very neat. Cases of cars in here by the looks of it, but we'll get through all the bubble wrap stuff. And some more exclusives, maybe? No, these might be anniversary vehicles. The 91 GMC Sonoma with the 1920 Indian Scout. Oh, cool, it's got a motorcycle in there. Wow, and does it actually fit in the box, this truck? It doesn't look like it's going to, but still a pretty cool accessory. Very cool. 100th anniversary Chevy trucks. Here it is again. Totally forgot I purchased these. Wow. Who knew? Who knew such things existed out there? The exclusives really are kind of cool. It gives you a jump start on adding some interesting vehicles to your collection. I think we've seen this one before, or at least I know I've already bought this one at least once. Very cool, old Chevy C10. And we've got some Hot Pursuit in here. This is, uh, I'm pretty sure I got the whole case. These are extras, most likely. The 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe Police Pursuit from Series... Uh, hmm. Doesn't actually have a series number on it. Limited edition. Very weird. Hmm. That might be an exclusive. That might not part, be part of a, uh, a series after all. And if that is the case, I think that's a first where they're actually going to label it 
hot pursuit without actually putting a series number on it. And the uh, other exclusive that I was looking for from the Low Riders series, Miho exclusive, 1986 Chevrolet Caprice classic with pinstriping, 100 spoke chromey rims. Very cool. Blue collar collection. Well, I've already got that already, so this is an extra now. Series 9, we do have the full series of that, so we'll be looking at that shortly. Nice little plow truck. And there's still lots more here to look at. Wow, check it out. Look at this beast. A 2018 Ram 3500 Dually flatbed. Military. Chili military. Wow. Very cool. That is awesome. It's got the uh, fifth wheel attachment on the back. Headache rack, hitch for hitch and tow, dually wheels. Whew. That's a cool one. I mean, these things are, there's more cars under these cases. We're not even anywhere near done sorting through cars that are just bubble wrapped. The cased cars, I'm going to leave for an unboxing in a future video because it's just, this video is going to be carrying on here. Oh, I bought more modern classics. Wow. Which modern classics series is this? Seems familiar already. I mean, we just looked at Modern Classics. Hmm, I know I have this series already. I wonder what I was thinking. Maybe it wasn't. Extra Modern Classics down here. Not really sure what's going on there. These are definitely the older Modern Classics, I think, unless I've pieced together. Well, it looks like I've pieced together kind of a weird collection of extra cars some of these are from the ones we just reviewed in the last couple days the prelude others are from a different series of modern classics altogether i'm not really sure how many are in here i may have had a special drink when i ordered this box i don't really know seems a little bit disjointed but whatever i'm not opposed to having extras yeah we've got some more of these modern classics in here Beamers, so this is going to be quite a horde I have of those. What have we got for the cases in here? Let's check out some of these cases and see what is lurking. What's lurking in these boxes here? Here we have Auto World. Yeah, this is going to be good. Premium 2021 Release 3. Oh, that is good. That's going to add into some Auto World's. I want to show you in the upcoming Auto World Johnny Lightning review video. So that's a good news. And we've also got more green light. Big, huge sealed case of green light. Always fun. Now I do save this bubble wrap, actually. I repurpose it in case I'm ever going to ship anything. I don't sell anything currently, but maybe one day I'll sell some of my extras. That, that's... Not going to happen anytime soon, but Anniversary Collection 13. So likely you're going to find that Jeep Gladiator we looked at first in this collection. So I probably bought a duplicate for that. Sneak peek on probably one of the coolest vehicles in that case. I've got some more car culture, modern classics probably down here. Got one more case to open up. Let's see what, what did I buy? Strange mixture of modern classics. Got a couple more of these 300 ZX cars. And, uh, well, this is the last little lot of those. Well packaged. Apologies for all the rough, ruffling noises, but this is a true unboxing video here. Yeah, so that's weird. I, I bought the wrong modern classics. Either that, the guy sent me the wrong modern classics. So that is really weird. I'm going to have to check the bill, see that I didn't get a mix-up there. It does happen. Maybe on my part, more likely on the seller's part, though. Can't see how I would have got that wrong. Who knows? And what have we got here? 956M Hot Wheels. I don't even know what's in this. Did we? M. This must be uh, another car culture series. I, I don't remember what I purchased here. So anyways, this is going to be an exciting video for you guys. Well... 
All right, so as you can see, I've bought so much stuff, I don't even remember what I bought. So I think we're going to probably open up most of that in tomorrow's video. Like I said, daily videos right through Christmas and beyond at this point. Uh, because I don't know what is in this case, this 956 Hot Wheels M case, I am going to open it up right now with you guys. Um, certainly there's lots of cases left to open. We've got the Auto World case, we've got the Green Light Anniversary case, not to mention the humongous horde of exclusives and uh, other things that need to be shared on this channel, preferably before the year 2022, which is fast approaching. So let's take a look at what we've got here. This is a brand new case to me. I cannot believe it. This is something I missed out at my local store, Aurelia Diecast. They sold out before I could even put in my order. And uh, we've got some amazing cars here. So I'm going to get the camera in a little closer while we take a look at this opening. This is fantastic. All right, so as you can see, I've bought so much stuff, I don't even remember what I bought. So I think we're going to probably open up most of that in tomorrow's video. Like I said, daily videos right through Christmas and beyond at this point. Uh, because I don't know what is in this case, this 956 Hot Wheels M case, I am going to open it up right now with you guys. Um, certainly there's lots of cases left to open. We've got the Auto World case, we've got the Green Light Anniversary case, not to mention the humongous horde of exclusives and uh, other things that need to be shared on this channel, preferably before the year 2022, which is fast approaching. So let's take a look at what we've got here. This is a brand new case to me. I cannot believe it. This is something I missed out at my local store, Aurelia Diecast. They sold out before I could even put in my order. And uh, we've got some amazing cars here. So I'm going to get the camera in a little closer while we take a look at this opening. This is fantastic. Well, it appears that I have a Hot Wheels Fast and the Furious Case M. So I've actually filmed my Hot Wheels case unboxings out of order this week uh, because we did just look at the latest and greatest Fast and the Furious cars uh, just a couple of days ago and now we're actually looking at the set that I missed. I had ordered this set originally or I tried to order it from my local store Aurelia Diecast. They had sold out so quickly I couldn't I couldn't get it. So apparently I ordered it from California from a different supplier and um, here it is. So we're going to actually open up this case here, look at all of these cars right now. So first vehicle out is going to be, and again, these are going to be in duplicate, no treasure hunts, but this set sold out very quickly and you're going to see why. The first car that I'm showing you right here, this Nissan Skyline GTR BNR 34 was the first car to sell out at the local shop. They had about 20 cases. It was sold out within the first day. Gone. So I missed it by a day, and uh, this is the car that no one is going to be able to find at your local store unless you're incredibly lucky. The hoarders and the scalpers have picked these things up from local Walmarts, you know, where they're typically 5 $6 Canadian. On the secondary market, you're paying anywhere between $15, $20 on these cars. That's pretty expected with the uh, high interest cars from these collections. So a bit of a peg warmer perhaps, but uh, none of these are really going to be peg warmers at Walmarts, is the 70 Chevelle Chevy Nova SS, and it's a beautiful casting. I only call it a peg warmer because the JDM craze is what is scouring the shelves of the collections. And on the back, you can see we've got some other JDM cars in here. The Supra, you're not going to be able to find Supras either in most cases. So the Skylines and the Supras are all but gobbled up. Hence why I order these directly from various suppliers online. We've got the 70 Chevelle SS. Now this car has been released multiple times in the Fast and the Furious set over the years. Of course, we've got different artwork each time. This time it's it's quite a bit different. But this flat gray Chevelle has been a long-running Fast and the Furious car. Of course, it is. these cars are all metal on metal, which is great. And uh, Fast Superstar, it says in the corner, just for differentiation. And here again is the next car you're not going to find at Walmart, which is the Toyota GR Supra. 
Also available in the Team Transport set, as we looked at just a couple days ago. Team Transport does feature the Toyota Supra in white. This is a very new casting and highly desirable for obvious reasons. This is a brand new car in real life. The Supra has just been redesigned for 2021 or 2022, which makes the car even more hard to find in 164 scale. For all of us that can't afford a brand new 1-1 scale Supra, what's the next best thing? A Hot Wheels 164 scale Supra. So here we have the 70 Dodge Charger. This is the off-road version. I love this casting personally, but it is also going to be one you're going to find hanging on the pegs most likely because it has been released in the main line and multiple car culture lines at this point of Fast and the Furious. It's one of the new regular castings. So a terrific casting of the Dodge Charger in off-road format. And uh, I just really like it. I think it's quite post-apocalyptic. And, uh, you know, what... What more would you want to cruise across the desert wastelands of a post-apocalyptic world than a 70 Dodge Charger with two spare tires, fuel cans, and who knows what under the hood. So there you go. That is Fast and Furious 956 Case M in review. If you're after any of these cars, happy hunting. And stick around. We've got a lot more videos coming. Because look at all of the die casts. We've got sealed cases, full sets, so much stuff. Pretty much a video every day through into the new year at this point. I'm holding to it. See you soon.